Cyberpunk 2077. You sick of hearing about it yet? I'm not. And oh boy has it been an excruciatingly frustrating circus fire. But underneath all the bugs and controversies and sleazy corporate horse excrement, there is a super fun game that I'm enjoying despite all the crap it's coated in. What you're looking at here is 1080p PC gameplay. On one side, the absolute best it can possibly look right now. Every single setting turned up, turned on, and maxed out. Running on a Ryzen 9 3900X 24-thread CPU with the community hack to make multi-threading work properly that I covered in a recent video. On the other side, well, no, that's not the Xbox base console. I'll show you that in a minute. Indeed, it is again PC gameplay, but this time with every last setting turned off or at its lowest option. And I needed to do that because that side is running on the weakest PC build that I have. The teeny tiny itty bitty ITX rig I built and did some videos about last year. It is only 3.3 liters in volume, half the size of a launch day Xbox One that I'm putting it up against in a moment. And inside there's no room for a dedicated graphics card. So I'm using one of AMD's APUs, the CPU GPU combo chips, specifically the remarkably punchy Ryzen 5 3400G, a 4-core, 8-thread CPU clocked in at 3.7 GHz and within it a Vega 11 GPU. And yesterday afternoon I decided I wanted to try to run Cyberpunk 2077 on this little battler of a gaming rig for poops and giggles basically, and to see if it could. And it turns out, as you're seeing, it can. In fact, I can hold a very nearly locked 30 FPS at 1080p with adaptive resolution scaling on set to a minimum of 50%, so a 720p internal render when it's working at its hardest. It's a bit ugly, and between the frame rate and the absolute lack of resolution and detail, well, it makes playing the sneaky, stealthy sniper type character I've built more than a bit challenging. Headshots from a distance when the heads are only four pixels wide is, uh, well, you know. Which got me thinking. Considering we now know the base consoles also internally render this game at 720p and 900p, I wonder how the weakest of the last gen consoles, the launch day Xbox One, would compare to this $450 micro size gaming PC. And if you are still curious and if you are going to keep watching, I would appreciate you showing that curiosity in the form of a thumb, comment, like, subscribe, etc, etc, etc. So, turns out on this little ITX machine, it in fact runs better, or at least smoother, than it does on the base Xbox One. We already know the base Xbox struggles with this game, so I've helped it out a little bit more by also turning off some graphic options there as well, like lens flare and motion blur, chromatic aberration, film grain. I didn't label the comparison at the start of the video because, well, it should be obvious, and I've not labeled these ones because I'm kind of curious if you can guess which is which. I'll give you a hint. The giveaway is the texture resolution. The PC side is noticeably softer, but I suspect there's also some pretty aggressive post-sharpening happening on the Xbox to make up for its own texture resolutions because, well, look at it. And the fact is, I could do that for the PC side. There is a sharpening options right in the Radeon driver panel, but frankly, at these kinds of resolutions, I think the softer look actually helps it a bit to not look so jaggy and aggressive. My little PC that could keeps the frame rate at or close to 30 FPS way more stably than the Xbox can do, and I've slowed down some clips here and there to try and show you the difference a bit clearer than that. Also, I had VSync turned off on the PC side because VSync just introduces a bit of input latency that I don't like, so you'll see a bit of tearing on the PC side too, while Xbox's frame sync is working nicely. Point for Xbox there, I guess. But all in all, frankly, I'd call neither really playable or acceptable, but I did find it an interesting little experiment to try anyway. Because frankly, I fully expected the Ryzen 5 3400G to completely seize up on this game. I was kind of expecting to have to dive into configuration files and turn down secret graphic options just to make it run in super potato mode, but yet again, and I feel like I've said this in literally every video I've made about this little ITX rig, AMD's APU kick way above their weight class, and price class for that matter. I keep telling myself I shouldn't underestimate this little bugger because it keeps surprisingly, even years later. I'll tell you what though, that little low profile Noctua fan I have in there is working hard on this one. Woohoo, it gets much louder than it usually does. So thanks for watching, I hope you've found this as interesting as I did. 
Uh, if not, thanks for making it to the end of the video anyway. Appreciate that. And thank you as always to the patrons scrolling up above there. Uh, and if you haven't looked at the Patreon recently, I've changed a few things over there. There's a new lower, lower price tier option now as well. Uh, and I know I don't push the Patreon stuff much, but it, it, it's, it, it's worth a mention, I guess. But thank you to the patrons who are already there as well. Thank you for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.